G'day champion, welcome back to Saturday Sorcery. It's me, your host, Bo Creamer. How are you today? What have you been up to? How was your week? How was your weekend? What is the crack? I really wanna know. Now, while you're filling out that comment section below with everything that you've been doing, today we're gonna dive into something a little bit more tame, a little bit more chill. What is in a gimmick building set? Now, after the last few gimmick builds, I had quite a few of you reach out to me and ask what this product does, where to get it from, and all that kind of jazz. So today I thought I would show you everything that is inside my gimmick building kit. Do you want to see it? Here you go. Whoa, look at that. Whoa, what a treat. Call your mum and tell her you're coming home because this is all you need in life. You want to see the top? There you go. Whoa, blimey, is that good. Now, the bottom is the best part. Look at that. Whoa. Now, obviously, you're not going to see much here, so let's go downstairs, open this bad boy up, and run through everything that I've got just inside. Now, here we are. We have our kit just here, but everything that I talk about, I'll have links in the description below. Uh, for where you can pick these up and where you can find them. So let's crack into this bad boy and see what's going on. So open this up and inside we've got some magnets here. So you can see here we've got maybe these are about 12 mil uh, in diameter uh, magnets ranging from about uh, half a mil for these ones in thickness to maybe about a mil here and then we've got some even smaller magnets here um, and a bunch of those here in this packet here. So definitely magnets are a good point, but we've got some stuff coming up in just a second where if magnets aren't your thing, you can jump into something else. Uh, and here I've got some spare razor blades for my X-Acto knife. Uh, these come in like a nice little case here. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them in here. Now let's open up the main compartment and get into it. Moving my case off to my table, I obviously did see this, and this is something you definitely need as well. It's a good cutting mat. So this one is a self-healing cutting mat. So when I slice into it, I'm not left with these big grooves. They kind of seal and heal over. I don't know if you can see them here, but you can see some cuts where I've come into it and they heal over. So I'm not feeling any crazy bumps on this. All right, so definitely pick one of these up. It's probably the best cutting mat I've ever had. And I'll have links to that in the description below as well. Now, the first thing inside my kit is this bad boy. I highly recommend a metal ruler. I wouldn't say a wood one or a plastic one, because if you're cutting into it with knives and that type of stuff, Last thing you wanna do is cut a piece of your plastic ruler off or cut a piece of your wood off and get splinters. This is the best, safest option that you can use. Now here are all my tapes. I'll run you through what every single one of these does. This first one is my double-sided tape. I use cello tape as I find this one holds really well, but it also doesn't have like any sticky residue if you need to move something off again uh, at a later date. It holds, like I said, really, really well. Uh, it's my go-to double-sided tape. And plus it's really thin as well, it's, it's perfect. Next up is my frog tape. Now this is a painter's tape. This means whenever I have to stick it down on top of a card or another object, I can put this down and peel it up and not have to worry about anything removing, like any piece of the card removing, any paint removing. This is used just to hold things in place, nice and tight, sturdy, but if I need to, peel them back up and have everything removed uh, and be safe. Good, strong, sturdy tape that doesn't mess me about. Now this last tape was bought to me by Chris James. So thank you so much, Chris. A link to Chris's Instagram will be in the description below if you have any questions about gimmick builds or what he uses, uh, but he is a genius. And thank you so much, Chris, for pointing me in the direction of this. Now this is magnetic tape. Now this does everything you want from those magnets before, but it is really good for inside tuck boxes, inside playing cards, as it is super thin, uh, super sticky and super reliable. Now here's my pen situation. I have a nice big thick black Sharpie a pen just for marking things, a regular Sharpie. I obviously have multiple of these inside my kits, but also these pens just here. Now these are perfect for if you're building a flap or if you have scored a card and you have that color slightly going off, the reds and obviously the blues are really good for covering up that white line on your cards. Now these are my cutting utensils. I have a nice big pair of scissors for big cuts and big jobs, such as like fabrics, that type of thing. Smaller scissors for if I need to cut into cards or cardboard, or just smaller objects. And also my trusty Rusty, I never leave home without this. I love this thing. My Friskers are like X-Acto knife. This is perfect. Now while there's a lot of other X-Acto knives out there, like, the, like I guess the pen form, which is a nice long one. I like this one because I can put my finger in here and I can cut down deep and get a bit more accurate and precise with this one. This is my favorite. I've used quite a bit and I never I leave home without this. I love this one. It's now time for the mid episode giveaway. But before we jump into what this week's giveaway is, let's give away last week's deck that stole everything tiny in its inside gimmick.
Hey. So I just chose the winner for last week's gimmick. Congratulations, Sean. If you could email me just here, my friend, I'll get those prizes straight out to you. Now it's time for this week's giveaway, where this week we're giving away a Johnny Kitten car load of gimmick builds. Now to enter into this week's giveaway, all you need to do is comment below, what is your favorite gimmick? Now it doesn't have to be a gimmick that you have to build. It could be a gimmick that's already pre-built inside a package, whatever you want, comment below, what is your favorite gimmick? I'll choose someone out at random and you'll be announced in next week's video. Good luck. Now here are my hole cutting devices. I have a nice little hole punch here, just a single hole punch, a double hole punch. Now this one here is one of my favorites. It's good for getting those precise holes and those precise dimensions that you want a hole to be cut at. Uh, it's like a little compass, as you can see here, but it does a really, really nice job. Now this EK hole punch was put on to me by Chris James. This one is the perfect size and dimension. So say if you want to cut out a hole on the back of this card, it's the same size as like the circle here for the angel. So we can go here and you can kind of crop that up and pop that out. You can see that's the perfect hole for that. Uh, it's great, love it. So thanks again, Chris, for your recommendation on this punch. Now a nice pair of tweezers never go amiss. These are the needle nose and these are magnetic. So they are good for picking up bits of magnets or coins or bits of metal if I need to. And they hold really well and they are perfect for anything I need to get in that I can't get my fingernails in or my fingers in definitely pick up a pair of tweezers. They're a must. Now I also have my battery operated eraser, which is obviously this is really good for erasing things out. But on the top here, I've attached some sandpaper, some really fine sandpaper. So it is really good for erasing things out on the back of cards or off bills or off certain things like that. You really wanna get on, but the eraser just smudges it. Really, really fine sandpaper, removes all that. And it's super helpful. And obviously you don't have to constantly rub things. This does everything in a small rotation. so. You can get in fine detail and make everything work really well for you. Another thing you should have in your kit for sure are cotton wool tips. These are perfect for getting into those tight to reach places with glues or paints or anything like that. These are really, really good for that. And also cleaning up objects after you put glue on them or made them a bit dirty. These are really good, very helpful. Now for my flaps, I use obviously a very fine needle just here. Really good, strong needle. I have a couple of these inside my kit. But for my elastic, I use the Prim Elastic. I find this works really well. It's really thin, uh, really strong, reliable, durable uh, elastic. So definitely pick some of this up. But I'll also have in the description below some elastics that magicians have designed and built them themselves and are available at your favorite magic shop. Now here is my glue situation. You can obviously use for your super glues, anything you get from like your, your corner store, anything like that, but obviously works really well. But the best one I find is this Loctite super glue. This has like obviously the squeezing on the side and the precision, uh, tip on it is perfect for getting those re hard to reach spots. Absolutely perfect. Definitely pick this one up if you can. Then as for my glue sticks, I use the prick glue stick, which is really good, uh, which is available anywhere you can kind of pick up glue. Or this one, if you can pick this one up, this is the Tombow glue stick. It is really, really good. Luke Oslin actually got me onto this glue stick. Uh, it's very, very good. I've never had a bad build using this glue stick. Now let's go over some miscellaneous items that are not 100% necessary for your kit, but you never know when you're gonna be caught out with these and you're gonna need them at a moment's notice. You don't wanna rush around and try and find them, but you've got them in your kit already. Some good twine, uh, not only is this good for tying some things up, but it is very good to like kind of pull apart and use as certain textures and in certain builds. Definitely get some twine to add to your kit. Next up is some jeweler's wire. This is very malleable, which is really good. It's also very good to put inside, say, headphones or inside cables. You can position them and actually have them kind of stand up and move about as you want them to. Some black art. Now, this is obviously a very small strip that I've cut up just so I could put it on my desk here. But I have a lot of this black art inside my kit. You never know when you're going to need to build some black art. Very good black art material. Uh, Luke Oslin got me onto this material as well. Some paper straws. Now this might sound silly, but you never know when you're gonna need paper straws. The amount of gimmicks that I've used these for on the fly that have been absolutely perfect. Plus these are paper, not plastic. So good for the environment. Plus also really good for builds. I, I can paint these, I can do whatever I want to these and not have them peel off the plastic. A scraper, so if I'm gonna split my cards, this is very good for flattening out and getting bubbles out of my builds. Uh, so post-it notes, because post-it notes are amazing, uh, and these come in a variety of colors, which I can use for little pieces of the paper to put on different objects, or you know, just to write notes down as I'm building gimmicks, that type of thing, uh, so I don't have a big notebook inside my kit. Plus a lot of sizes of different matches. Now, why matches and not a lighter, you say? Well, a great question. I actually prefer matches, 
because I can use the boxes for things afterwards as well, like a rattle box or that type of thing. I enjoy them because they have multiple applications that I can use with the match. Now this little bit of material uh, is very handy. This sits on the bottom of your furniture, so obviously you can slide your furniture around. But if you cut little sections out and even thin it up, this is really good to put inside objects that obviously clunk and flap and pop together. You don't want any of that noise. This is a really good silencer. Now I also have some sticky stuff removed. This is really good for peeling labels off bottles and get rid of all that stuff and have a nice clean surface to work with. Now obviously a couple of spare decks of cards that I can build stuff into and even just some loose cards that I've taken from the decks that I've pulled out in the past. Also what you'll find is really handy and really reliable is a Tipex a white out marker. So you can just use this as you need to like mark things out on objects you need to make a little bit white or if you've messed something up or marked your cards with a little bit of black ink, you need to remove that. This is really good for removing all your messes up and your mix ups. A trusty pair of pliers. These are really good for obviously moving those bits of wire that don't want to be moved uh, and moving objects that you know are very hard to work with. Uh, and also it's got the cutter down here in the middle, which is good for cutting those wires as well. Now this last one is one that I highly recommend. I use it all the time. I'm actually gonna have to, have to bring it in a shot here so the lighting might change is this delicious bad boy. This is what I carry with me everywhere. This is my LED light, it's really good. It can go for different like dims. It's really, really reliable. It has never let me down. It can go in different lights so it can be white or warm or different colors, but it is really good and it comes on this tripod so I can actually adjust it and have it sit on my table and move the light where I need to. So I'm never having shadows across certain things or even a headlamp will work for you if you wanted to use a headlamp. But I like this one as I can adjust my lighting from where I need to build certain things. Uh, and I never have to worry about different shadows covering on where I'm slicing and dicing and I can't see anything. This is perfect. And one last thing I always carry and I highly recommend, and it's probably completely obvious, but paper towel. This is really good for obviously mopping up the, the messes that you make or keeping uh, the glue in but it's also really good to like, kind of like fold and get into those hard to reach places that you kind of need to get glue out of or get glue into this is really really handy keeps everything clean tidy and neat paper towel is a must now unfortunately my friend that's all we have time for for saturday sorcery this week thank you so much for joining me if i've missed something from this kit that you have in your own personal kit throw it in the comment section below let's make this like a little forum where we can discuss different objects different things that are inside each other's kits but if you're new to gimmick building, I hope this episode has been informative enough that you've learnt what everything does and how everything should be used. Now I'll let you back to your Saturday champion. So thanks for coming, hanging out, tuning in, and I'll see you soon on our Discord for our weekly jam, which is going on right now, actually. Otherwise, I'll see you next week for a What's New this week on Wednesday, the Stumped on Tuesday, and next Saturday again for another Saturday Sorcery. Now take care. See you later. Bye for now. Whoa, look at this. Whoa. So much good magic in there. You you need to check this out. You're not going to regret it. I, I, I pinky promise you. Oh, whoa. Look at this. This shining diamond over here. What is this? Beautiful. You probably should click that if you haven't subscribed yet. But then you should definitely check out this because this, this is good. Treat yourself.